press Shift A, Image Reference, and find your ship wheel uh, reference image. Bring it in, and let's press S3 to scale it up. Press 3 to look from the side. Pull it back a good ways from the front again, and pull it over. And try to get this pretty much in the center. You can press G to move the background image as well. And we'll start off right about there. All right, so I'm going to create this circle, and then we're going to create this circle, and then we're going to create these things. We'll create the bolts, and then we'll do the texturing. All right, so I'm going to press Shift A, Mesh, Circle, and I'm going to be using subdivision surfaces. I'm going to go for, say, 20 vertices. Rotate X90. And with that done, I'm going to take my background image and I'm just going to move it again until we're a little bit more on the reference. That's probably pretty good. Let's go into edit mode, S to scale. I'm going to pull right out to that outer edge there. All right, now I uh, provided you a few different views. We are right on this outer border, so we're going to extrude in. And I'm going to come out, etc., etc. So we'll be coming back to this view. All right, so let's press E and S and come into about there. All right, so you can see that it slopes inwards. So I'm going to just turn, uh, let's see. I think what I'll do is I'm going to press E and S and I'll come to this edge right there. And then I'll turn and I'm going to pull that out away. So it doesn't matter how far exactly. Okay, E and S, we'll do this, that's a flat region. E and S come into here, this region will, will dip down. So we'll pull to the side and we'll pull it in. All right, E and S will come to here and then it goes backwards a bit, E and come back. Just like that, that's good enough. Okay, deselect. Shift Alt and click back there. And let's have a look here. Okay, so it's going to come out a, a, a little ways, sort of flat, and go down, and then extrude out that way. So let's do that. Let's just come back a little ways. We can't do this on the reference image, so we'll just do that. And then we will come in a little ways. All right, so with E and S, we'll come in. I might come in to about that level. And then I'm going to extrude backwards a ways. And ju just do that. All right, that's obviously too far, but all right, something like that. So that's good enough for the moment. Now, uh, I am going to put subdivision on this. I'll go for Control-1. We'll try that and see if that's uh, enough. All right, now let's put some edge loops in here. All right, to, to sharpen it up. I'm going to press 2 just for edge selection. Control-R. And pull up close to this edge and control r and pull up close to that edge let's go control r and pull down i may want another one coming up but we'll just carry on control r will come down i think i'll come up as well to do that and i think maybe i will come up to here so i pretty much have three edges essentially the same as beveling all right, I'm going to control R and come up here. Control R, I'm going to come down to there. Let's flatten this out a bit. Control R over here and here. Let's just have a look at that. I probably will be using two subdivisions the more I think about it. And uh, let's see where I am. I don't need that. Now let's do a control R here and here to sharpen that up. I am going to switch to two. Let's put an edge loop in here. That's pretty good. Uh, really, the wood texture will take care of some of the bumpiness if we have that. So I'm going to probably start with that. Okay, so we're going to move on now to the outer ring, and to do that, we're going to take one of these rings and scale it. So in edge selection, just select any one, Shift-Alt and click, Shift-D to duplicate, and S to scale. 
and pull it out to here. I think I will separate this though. So I'm going to press P, separate by selection. All right, back into edit mode for this one for vertex selection so we can see a little bit better. Cursor is still right in the middle, so perfect. E and S and come in. And as you can see, uh, we've done this piece. It's going to come out a nice distance. So let's press E and S and come like this. But we'll take the whole thing, I think. And actually, the way I think I'll do that, let's do the next one. And then we'll extrude back. E and S come right to here. Okay, perfect. All right, I'm going to press 2 for edge selection. Shift, Alt, and click here and here. And uh, we are going to bring these back just a little bit. Form like a lip, like structure, E, and come back. That's good enough, probably. 3 for face selection. Shift, Alt, and click here. And now we're going to extrude these out. I think we'll have to move this whole piece backwards, though. So I'm going to come out a good ways. And I'm going to select the whole thing. And let's see. Let's, let's pull this back to... Let's look in wireframe. Back to maybe around here. And we'll adjust that. Because these pieces are going to come through here. And just in behind that lip there. All right, we can see them there through this this protrusion part here and right in behind onto the back piece of that so let's let's have another look at this we'll add edge loops in a moment so we're going to come through this onto there so let's just sharpen this up now with some edge loops here and here and we'll do an edge loop coming up here and down there we'll do an edge loop on here here and we'll have one here I don't need one at the back let's uh, make sure we're, so we select that and shade smooth and let's make sure I did that on that one as well all right we uh, we have an inside part to do so we'll bring an edge loop down here that might be enough right there okay so we may have to move some of this so we may have to lengthen it but we're going to see then this part would just fit against the wall so we don't have to worry anymore about that okay I'm going to turn on the cavity shader now and I'm going to look and see what's flipped and the middle one is selected all 10 recalculate inside it's time to work on these pieces here so let's bring in a cube let's scale it and bring it up in wireframe I'm going to box select the bottom and pull it down back in the solid view and we need to position this so now we can get a sense of how this would work okay that would fit in there all right I think what I'll do is I'm going to take this piece again in wireframe and I'm going to scale shift Z to make it a bit narrower I think it'll just look a little bit nicer here so we're still pretty much using the diagram I may move this up later we'll see all right very nice okay so to get this shape we are going to control R put an edge loop there and there and I'm going to hide this piece and in vertex selection I'm going to select the outer four vertices there and I'll do the bottom as well or you could do the top and mirror it but I'm going to do it this way okay I'm going to scale in the Z and pull these down I realize I'm not really looking at the diagram I'm just kind of doing it I think that's okay though for what we want to do and you do it any way that we really want all right so we're just pulling them down to create that we're going to add a subdivision in just a moment but um, to give this some reinforcement I'm going to select these edges and I'm going to uh, give them a mean crease I'm going to go shifty and pull 
and I'm gonna pull all the way until they're red. If I open the, the dialog box here, uh, these are at one. And uh, we can go ahead and do control two on this and it will start to look like that, but we get a sense of those. I'm gonna come in now with a loop cut there and I'll bevel it, control B to split it and just pull it up and down like this. And the only thing about doing it this way is I still want to go back in now and have these match the uh, the contour, actually these ones. And I'm, I'm just going to pull them down to sort of match the other ones a little bit. And I'm going to do a similar thing on these ones. And then we'll bring in more edge loops. We'll, get, we'll shape this a little bit nicer. So just hang on and we'll do that. Just a little bit like that. Okay. Now I'm going to shift alt and click these again. And we're going to scale in the Z a little bit more just to tighten that up. And we can try shift D and pull to sharpen. Now you can see it moving. I don't need it all the way necessarily. It's probably pretty close anyhow though. All right, so we have that. Let's just see if putting another edge loop, just dropping one in is good. You know what, that might look, look okay for wood. It's a little bit sharp. And so what we could do is we could select that. I'm just gonna do the top here, pull it down a little bit put another edge loop there so it's not quite as tight but we still get that and I'll be flattening this out a little bit so I think I'll do a similar thing on the bottom it's okay it's not exactly the same pull that up put one there you could cut it in half and do that now I'm going to take this and I think I, I might just scale it up a little bit and alt H and see how this would would look I think I think we're all right Okay, so let's see. We have these uh, circular-like structures at the top and at the bottom. I'm thinking we could probably do them together. Let's, let's just uh, let's hide that again. So what if I take that and uh, and that, and what I'm going to do is. I think I'll E and SZ, scale it up just a little bit, and then right click loop tool circle. And then I think I'll switch to individual origins and scale it. Let's try that. And then let's try extruding up a little bit and then deleting faces. I'll probably make that a little smaller I'm not sure. Yeah, I think so. I think I will. I'm going to do the top part first. I'm going to bring that down. I'm going to control plus and I'm going to scale shift Z to make it a little narrower like that. And pinch it in and just keep going back and forth and having a look. Okay. Now, I'm going to um consider if I want these so extreme. Just a little test here to pull these down. No, I missed that one. I want all sides of this that are poking up. Let's see what I've got. That, that, that. A little bit less. All right, yeah. Okay, come in and I want an edge loop just down there. I think I'll do it that way. All right. Okay, so back to this. All right, shift alt and click that edge. I'm going to press E and to extrude and come out to here. I'm gonna bring another edge loop to about here as this area here that we're going to extrude out, actually just scale out to make that bulge. So I'll do it to about there and then I'll put one more edge loop in S just to round it a little bit more. All right, I'm doing the same kind of thing on the bottom. That one's a little bit smaller than the diameter of this, so let me look. I can adjust that if need be by shift alt and click there and control plus a few times to get down. I think I'll come right down to the stem of that and scale shift Z and just pull it in. Kind of by eye, not always on the diagram. 
All right, good enough. All right, let's do this part here. Shift Alt and click. I'm gonna go E and come up a little ways, get a little bit of a straight area, and then E, come up to here and scale it out. Like that, E. I'm gonna come into here, and I'm gonna scale in. And of course, I'm not in a wireframe anymore. We're just sort of doing the outline. Okay, this part here, let's try Shift E, the mean crease. See how nice we can get that. Not too sharp, not bad, not bad at all. Okay, back in edit mode, Shift Alt and click here. Uh, let's see, how about we come up a little bit? I think I went off the dike, the E, and we'll come up. Just a little bit, E come up to here I got sort of a halfway spot here here and then here so let's scale out to there E will come out to there and then we'll come home E will come up to here scale it in pull it down a bit put an edge loop there and scale it out round it out a bit maybe I'll put an edge loop here just wherever it falls Scale it. Another one here. Scale it. And here I am going to F. I'd inset to pull it in. E to extrude down. And then I'll take this and I'll control B and I'll bevel. Just to finish that off. And let's see if that's enough. Just like that. So that I do have a flattening and a little spot there. You can then look at that and say, you know what, I got have to tweak that. But you know what, in my opinion, that's not bad. If you were carving this out of wood, it wouldn't be perfect either. So I think I'm going to stick with that. All right. Let's come to the bottom here and see where we're at. Let's drop an edge loop here and make sure we're not overlapping. That's fine. I think that's fine. On the other hand, I might want to take these points that are extending down and I might just ease off a little bit on them. Yeah, like that. Good. And again, if it looks a little smooth, the wood texture will, will take care of some of that for us. Okay. So what to do here? Let's pull back. What we, what we want to do is we want to create a, a ball-like structure that's going to attach to, where, where could I see that? It's going to attach in behind there, there, right there. All right, so it's got to be big enough to do that. All right. Um, so we'll do what we can. Let's go into wireframe. And let's go E and come, actually, I think I'm going to come Almost all the way now that I think about it, I'm going back to solid view, press the period key to focus. I'm going to come to about there, and then I'm going to press E to extrude, and I'm going to come the rest of the way. And then shift alt and click this in, in face selection. I'll go back to the diagram and go in wireframe or not. Yeah, I don't need to. I'm going to press S. To make that bulge. Maybe like that. One more S. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah, it looks a little bit like an apple or something like that. Um, let's see. Maybe I'll scale that in, pull it down a little bit. Yeah, that's all right. That's okay. It's gonna look. It's gonna look good. I hope it is. Okay. Yeah. And now I'm just thinking about actually um, tightening this all up a bit, scaling the Z. I probably probably brought those down before. Now I just want them a little sharper. Just looking at a little, little, little bit sharper. 
I read enough of that. That's fine. That's fine the way it is. Or do I want to do something here? I keep saying that's fine, and then I decide. Uh, all right, that's fine. It is. Okay, so Alt H, let's bring that back. And, um, let me turn that off for a moment. Yeah, I need another edge loop down there. And I think I'm okay with the thickness of this. Am I? Well, on the other hand, I might select there and control plus a couple of times. Let's see if I've got what I need just to move that back. All right, so let's select this whole thing and shift S cursor to selected and we can hide the background image for now. I'm going to take this with the 3D cursor right there in the middle and we're going to shift D rotate Y 180 degrees and I'm going to control J to join those. All right, good. Okay. Shift D rotate Y 90 and I'm going to join it to those and shift D rotate Y 45 and I'm going to join them all together and we have this at this point we can now just touch this up we can come in here and say okay I don't need it to go that far back I could snap it and of course if it's going to go on the wall it probably would be I don't need that on uh, let's just snap to edge so I'll take this I'll pull it in and I'll hover my mouse over that edge and that'll snap to that edge and you know I don't need these back faces but I'm not going to mess with those and you might see underneath there so I'm going to leave that the only thing is I'm not sure I want this as tight as it is so I'm going to take this and S to scale and just back it off a little bit yeah now's the time to do that kind of stuff I feel a little bit the same way about this it's a little busy um, maybe I could take that and just pull it back a little bit. All right, anyways. Okay, let's put the bolts on it now, or whatever you would call those things. Let's come up here on this one here and select that edge right in the middle. Shift S, cursor selected. Shift A, mesh. Cir uh, I don't know what I got. Circle, I guess, I hope. I'll go for 16 vertices. Scale it down. I have to make face rotate x90 scale it down I'm not looking at the, the uh, reference image now I just I just want something right in the middle that would look like it would hold these and that's going to be just fine so I'm gonna pull it out E to extrude it back a bit X faces get rid of that face and control B and put maybe one segment there and just shade smooth and put that in there and just look at this again say is this is this sharp enough in the end and now that I look at this I'm going to scale this out and I'm going to take this and I'm going to scale it down yeah that's fine like that okay okay so with that there I'm going to select the wheel again the outer wheel and bring the 3d cursor to there and I'm going to take this I'm going to set the origin of the 3D cursor and I'm going to shift D, rotate Y 180 and join. Shift D, rotate Y 90 and join. And shift D, rotate Y 45 and join. Now, what I should do again is look at my polys. Oh, everyone's facing the right way. Cool. All right, we got those little holes there. Yeah, very nice. Okay, and how far does that stick out? Okay, it sticks out a bit. All right, so what we have left to do is to do the materials and make the clock face and the glass. So let's work on that right now. Let's jump over to the shading tab. And we're going to select uh, this part. I'm going to click new, and I'm going to call this wood. And we're going to put on a wood texture. I'll provide you a link for this one if you want to use the same. Shift, Control, T. We're going to use this wood. Uh, I'm going to use color. Uh, I'm going to do this in Eevee, so not displacement. I'm going to use this normal open gel and this roughness and put that in there. Now we need to unwrap this to make it look even better. So 
Uh, let's go to UV editor and I'll show you how we're going to do this. Press one to look from the front and look in material preview and you can see something going on but it's not really looking looking right we're not even unwrapped okay so the way we're going to do this and get the grain to go around in a circle is we're going to select one of these quads all right with that selected i'm going to press Control l this is still the active one i'm going to press u and light map pack okay and then u follow active quads okay and we have straight. I'm going to scale this down. I'm going to rotate 90. And I'm going to put that somewhere in here that fits. And we will have this effect. All right, I'm going to add the wood material onto here. Go into edit mode, select one of these faces, and control L, and press U, light map pack, okay. U, follow active quads, okay scale it down that's already in the correct orientation for the concentric rings and we'll get that very nice for these i'm just going to select them all and i'm going to press u smart uv project we'll come back we'll add the wood and we will have a look at them and they look just fine yeah i'm happy i'm happy with that same thing with these guys U, Smart UV Project, and Wood. And they look okay as well. So let's go back to Layout and have a look at this. All right, we could try a different HDRI. All right, let's create the clock face now. I'm going to bring in a new circle. And I will go for, say, maybe, uh, I'll go for 20 vertices. to make a face rotate x90 and we'll just position this somewhere inside here scale it out a little bit so that it it fits and that's going to be the clock face let's go over to the shading tab and press new and call this something like face and we'll have to unwrap this so i'm going to look from the front I'm just going to edit mode and you unwrap but let's make sure that it's facing the right way yeah it is so that's great okay so to do this just select the principal bstf and just go Control t not shift Control t just Control t that'll give us the texture coordinate coming out of uv the mapping node and just one image texture instead of all the other ones as well we'll open the clock face image that i provide by a download all right and there it is let's go over to uv editing and a couple of things we need to fix select and let's scale in to this brown line right about there all right so that's the first thing and the second thing is we need to rotate this so that the clock is facing the right direction so just press r and rotate until you got that 12 o'clock right up at the top Okay, let's take this and scale it in a little bit, just so you can see that brown line there. And I may have to move this a little bit. Let me just see. A little bit darker there, a little bit lighter there. So I might, uh, I might just press G and just position this a little bit more to my liking. So this is what we have so far. And the last thing I'd like to do is add some glass to this. So the way I'll do that is Shift A, Mesh, UV Sphere. I'm just going to leave the default values. I'm going to look from the side and I'm going to rotate X90 and go into wireframe and one for vertex selection and box select all of that and delete. Take this and scale this in the Y. So it's relatively flat, although I do like a roundness to this. For the light to bounce off and pull this into a, a reasonable position where you think it should go i'll start with it there control one and shade smooth and uh, i'm not sure i might want it actually out a bit further and uh, yeah, we can we can start with that anyhow all right let's go back in the shading tab now with that selected click new let's call this glass 
and there's lots of different styles of glass that you can make. I'll just show you what I'm going to do here. I'm going to press Control Plus, and we'll do it all right here. And I'll do this pretty quick. Shift S, Shader, Mix Shader. So I just switched it. Shift D, another Mix Shader. Shift A, Shader, Transparent. I'm going to connect one to the bottom there. Shift D and duplicate it. And I'll connect one to the top there. Bring that up. Shift A, Shader Glossy down here. I'm going to connect that to the bottom one there. And I'm going to make this 0 0.2 and I'm going to switch this to sharp. I think it'll look better. Let's connect that there to that one there. And the last thing we'll do is we'll put an in, uh, input Fresnel on there. I'll just leave the default values. Bring that in there and let's have a look at that. So it's nice and shiny, but it's not glass yet. I'm going to come over here to these properties. I'm going to turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, and screen space reflections. I like to do stuff in EV, so we'll just leave it like that. Um, but on the material itself, I'll hit the material tab and come over here to the blend mode and we'll switch to alpha blend. And it looks like this. It looks great. The one thing I would want to do here, however, is I'm going to add um, solidify. And I'm just going to bring it above. And that is that right there without putting any grunge or anything on there. All right. Now, um, we can try this in different lights. You can see how reflective that is and shiny. So you can decide if you like it like that, if it's too much for you. All right, I'm going to leave it there for a second. And actually, in that lighting, the clock face looks okay. It looks bright enough. Um, you know, uh, I'll just go, I'll come to that one, actually. What you can do, I just want to show you this last thing, is um, you can come in to the clock face itself if you need it to be brighter or glowing. Let's go Control Plus. And you can connect the color of the clock face image into the emission. And I'll just come back to here. It's already a little brighter because the emission is set at one here. But just watch, I'll just set it at something like three. And you can see it's it's brighter there. So if for any reason you needed that brighter, um, you could do that. Uh, I'm not going to do that though, because I think we're okay as, as is. And that is our model right there, done. All right, we've got this somewhat wood plasticky look like, I mean, I think this would look really nice in somebody's study. It doesn't have to be, you know, real wood and going for sort of a, I don't know, a make-believe kind of wood with this old clock face and this glass. You can, of course, roughen it up. You can do this in Substance Painter, but there it is in Blender. All right, so thanks for watching. Hope that was interesting.